I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. You would think that they would not, that they, and that that's, that's not, let me tell y'all, I don't know if I said this already, but let me tell y'all what my real assessment of them at this point. Their egos are too fucking big that they don't even have the ability to comprehend the clear moment they're in. They still have this grandeur mind thinking that they're untouchable, not just because of their narcissism or sociopathic behavior or the fact that they are that they are, uh, they think, they don't think in the sense of the seat or the seats. They think as common street bums. But this is what I've come to, to the conclusion of. They are so uneducated that they don't even fully comprehend the weight of what's going on. And that shit is sad. They don't know the laws and the stuff well enough because they have depended on the advice of other people who didn't even have their best interests at heart, that even when you have a clear subpoena with your name on it, you still try to do things that's dumb knowing they watching at every turn. And if a motherfucker then pulled up audio, video, testimony, witnesses, facts, inspired people, I wouldn't even fuck with that person personally, but it teaches on. But this is what he does. I don't know if y'all seen it, but you mean to tell me that after you made the threat that I didn't even record you on because I'm sitting up here letting you live, you going to put this on your page in real life, play the game. Now let's play the video. Shot YouTuber. Now, what idiot can't decode that? That is called circumstantial evidence. It gives further credence to my claim, to my allegation. And here I was thinking and have been under the impression that this was a smart man. Well, the real police, they saw that too. I'm fucking disappointed. And I want to say this on the record. You said to me you were father. Well, I think you fucking forgot. Oh, well. And I ain't afraid in the sense that I'm not going to show up. But you probably should dumb me down a lot. So with that being said. Oh. I'm sorry. I told you I had so much to cover tonight. I want to go over the report with Lacey. Is that okay? Or you guys want me to not go over the report and just wait till I release the body cam footage? What should I do? Do y'all want the report or do we not? Because that's just going to make this video longer. I can get off of it. If I need, if I can get off. Um, Boy was found not guilty of aggravated malicious wounding. You want to see that again, Cairo? 
do you all want to see the report or do y'all want me to wait until I do the video? 10 votes, let's do it really fast. Come on, y'all. I think I feel good about what I talked about so far. And I don't want to hold y'all, it's already 11.33. Two, three, okay. I see people saying report, so I'm going to just go ahead and do it. All right, let's get to the report. Now, mind y'all, y'all, people going to say I'm lying, but I'm not. I have not read the report in its entirety because I was waiting on more evidence. So we're going to read this together. I remove, boy. All right. Here we go. Let's read this report together. Okay. In summary, on 4-30, 2024, 1908 hours, I was dispatched to 12665 South Pulaski. For a disturbance dispatch related, the caller was Chief Police Lacey Lewis. Lewis Lacey. Dispatch advised the subject named Jedediah Brown was harassing and stalking the mayor of Dalton, Tiffany Hinyard. Dispatch related the offender was in a black blazer bearing Illinois registration. Well, right there, we have our confirmation that she was inside of the BMW that she tried to say was not attributed to her, dummy. So look, not only that, I didn't know she was in the car. If you remember looking at the video, we talk about it being Kamal, and I want you all to know on record, I never even spoke to this lady or even saw her, which is also clear on the video footage from the gas station. I arrived at Restaurant Depot um, and did not see anyone in the parking lot. Cairo, you're getting on my screen, baby. You got to get down. Get down, baby. Come on. Come on. You're messing up daddy's uh, thing. I arrived at Restaurant Depot and did not see anyone in the parking lot nor any vehicles. I pulled into 127th Street where I saw a black unmarked squad car with red, blue emergency equipment. What y'all say? What that say? Activated. It is unlawful for the police to be utilizing their emergency equipment in their car when they are off duty. It is illegal for a person to operate in the capacity of a police officer off duty in a completely different jurisdiction. They don't have on their equipment. They don't have on, they're not on call. They're not on radio. However, yes, it is a fact that chiefs make their own rules so they can say that they was on the clock. However, you gonna have to prove that because literally if you was on the clock, if you was on the detail, this is what you also made a mistake. You got out with those coochie cutter short song, fat boy. Did y'all change the requirements for what you wear when there is, when y'all on y'all protection detail? I guess y'all trying to save some money now. Let's go back to it. We read that together. I said he had on his equipment. Emergency activated just east of the intersection, 127, the Pulaski. The vehicle was bearing Illinois plate MP21940. I pulled up to the vehicle and spoke with the driver who identified himself as police chief Lace, Chief Lewis Lace. Lacey related the incident was happening at Speedway. Lacey related an individual later identified as Jedediah Brown was stalking and harassing the mayor, Tiffany Hinyard. I got to the intersection of 127 to turn southbound. Lacey pulled up next to me and pointed at a black SUV stopped in traffic just south of the intersection of 127th and Pulaski. I then turned around to go northbound. The SUV turned east on 127th and I caught up to the vehicle at approximately 127th. The vehicle matched the registration provided by dispatch. There was only one other vehicle on the roadway that was not involved in the incident and I then activated my emergency equipment to perform the investigative stop on the vehicle. There was no location for the vehicle to pull off the road due to a bridge by dock. The SUV did not pull over nor slow down. I realized the vehicle was not going to stop, so I turned off my emergency equipment after the Vidoc before 127th and Winston. I last saw the vehicle traveling southbound on Kesey. Lacey pulled up to my squad car 
Lacey told me that Brown was stalking, harassing Henyard, and I told him I would follow him to the Speedway to discuss the incident. Lacey and I both relocated to the Speedway gas station, and I spoke with Lacey, who was able to provide me Jedediah Brown's information. Lacey related Jedediah Brown was a YouTuber. Uh-oh, there go that language. Excuse me. Cairo, you're going to get a whooping. Pop, pop, pop. Lacey spoke to me that he was a YouTuber. I went live on the event. Stop, Cairo. This monkey, y'all, please give me a second. He on top of the cabin. You want some attention so bad. Stop it, baby. I love you. Okay. Uh, Lacey related. Henyard had other incidents involving Brown. Henyard had other incidents involving Brown in the town of Dalton. Lacey said that Henyard had an order of protection. Ooh. Lacey said that Henyard had an order of protection against Brown. There you have it. I returned to my squad car to perform a lead search. I removed my body camera from my person and placed it in my squad car. I asked Sergeant Dollar about recording with the body camera due to my body camera going to record sensitive information with the caller being the police chief of Dalton and a possible victim being the mayor of Dalton. He advised me to keep my body cam on during the entire incident. My conversation with Sergeant Dollar did not last longer than approximately five seconds. I placed my body camera on my person. I performed a lead search and did not find an order of protection regarding Henyard and Brown. I then spoke with Lacey. Related, he received a phone call from Henyard. Henyard told him that she was being followed and stalked by Jedediah, Lacey related Brown had an issue in the past regarding Henyard and the village of Dalton. Lacey related Henyard first provided him a location in Crestwood, which was the wrong address. Lacey related Henyard provided him an address for a restaurant depot. Lacey related he arrived at the speedway and saw the black SUV bearing my plates. Lacey said he never got out of the vehicle nor spoke with Brown. Lacey said he could hear Brown yelling but was unsure what he was saying. Lacey called the police. Lacey related Brown left the parking lot went south. Lacey, did, Lacey said Brown then pulled into uh, Arkema parking lot, followed him. Lacey followed him. Lacey followed him. Lacey followed him. Lacey followed him into the parking lot. Lacey related that he did not want a confrontation with Brown. He left the parking lot back to Speedway. Related Brown followed him to Speedway, parked in front of his vehicle. Lacey related he observed APD uh, 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 vehicle and left the parking lot towards them. Lacey then spoke with me and advised Brown vehicle of the incident. I spoke with Henyard. What did she say? Oh, this is good. I'm glad we did this. Lacey related, Henyard related, she and Kamal Woods stopped at a Speedway gas station in her, in her vehicle. There y'all go. Thought that vehicle, oh, there it go. In her vehicle, Henyard related, Woods parked the vehicle in the east parking lot with the front facing the door. Henyard said Woods entered the speedway to purchase chips. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Henyard said that she saw a black SUV pull up near gas pump 1516 behind her vehicle. Henyard said she saw the subject she recognized as Jedediah Brown. And Brown saw his and saw his phone in the front window with the camera facing her vehicle. Henyard said Brown exited the vehicle and was wearing a black baseball hat, beard, white pants, flip-flops, and she said Brown was walking up to the vehicle. Woods then walked out of the gas station. That's not correct, but thank you. Henyard said Brown returned to his vehicle. Uh-oh. So if I was harassing or stalking, okay. Henyard said Woods then moved their vehicle towards Brown. Henyard related Woods, related Woods, then exited the vehicle and spoke with Brown. Henyard said she could not hear any of the conversation. She related, she called Lacey. Henyard related, Brown then left, was re-entered the vehicle. Henyard related, she never spoke with Brown or had any interactions with him. Henyard advised she usually has a Dalton police officer with her, but did not have one riding with her today. 
I then spoke with Woods. Woods related, he and him y'all stopped the speedway so he can get snacks. Woods related, he parked the vehicle in the east parking lot facing westbound. Woods entered the speedway. Woods exited the gas station, saw the SUV parked between the gas pumps and parking spots. Woods saw a male, we recognized the Jedi Brown walking towards the vehicle. Brown then stopped and returned to his vehicle. Woods got out, got into his vehicle, pulled near pump 16. Woods got out, spoke with Brown. Woods related due to his window tents being so dark that he believed Brown did not know Henyard was in the vehicle. Wow. Wow. Woods said he told Brown he did not want any issues with him and only he wanted to be left alone. Not true. It's a fucking lie. Woods related Brown appeared fidgety. Oh, Woods related Brown did not threaten him nor display any weapons, but Woods related Brown then drove away. Woods related Lacey pulled into Speedway to park near the pump. Woods said Brown returned to his vehicle in the front of his. Woods said Lacey left the parking lot and, and Brown followed. I requested to speak with the Speedway staff regarding surveillance video. He advised a return of approximately 0400 hours, speak with the manager. I explained the parties involved, how to obtain an order of protection, and they advised and understood. I went to 7-Eleven gas station to see their surveillance video to capture the incident. Staff allowed me to review the video. 7-Eleven did not have any cameras that pointed towards Speedway. 7-Eleven showed the cameras at the intersection. of the. I watched the video and did not see any disturbances, nor listed any parties in the parking lot of the restaurant depot. I saw a squad car searching the restaurant depot lot. I saw my squad car leave the parking lot. I saw Lacey's vehicle activate emergency equipment at 127th and Pulaski. I obtained a copy of the surveillance videos and, and, paste, and placed it in evidence.com. I then reviewed traffic surveillance cameras, minute, 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 minute man capture the vehicle bearing the plates. I reviewed the Fuses camera system did not find any camera in the area that would capture the incident. I then looked at Brown's Facebook account to see if he broadcasted the interaction and I was able to locate two videos that he posted on his Facebook account. Both videos were posted one after another. The video he describes himself stopping in an undisclosed, lo undisclosed location. Brown said he saw the SUV was exited the vehicle. Brown related he recently left court. Brown placed his phone in the windshield. He was going to speak to Woods. He entered the BM who entered the BMW. I found a screenshot of the partial petition of the order of protection that Brown, the petitioner, had against Lacey, the defendant. I saw a second video where Brown was saying that he was being followed. Uh, Brown keep mentioning Lacey. Brown related that he did go and get an order of protection against Lacey. The both videos were captured and placed in evidence.com. A screenshot of the petition was placed into evidence. Okay, I'm going to read all of that later because that's the evidence. But I think that it's interesting okay 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 and then there go my statement okay why would i read this with you guys in real time and i didn't read it myself my team already read it I was given a briefing, but I had not read it. I did not even know that they had quoted those statements, but I want you guys to have one important and powerful takeaway. And I'm going to place these this police report on my page. Lacey, Lewis Lacey, is totally unfit to be a police officer. And he just shot his credibility that this man knows. He has to know. He actually does know. Because Lacey was with me in court with Lieutenant Staples, who actually filed a police report. So he knows the process. That police report, I mean, that order of protection that ultimately was lifted by a judge who saw no cause. This lying piece of shit chief who is not even qualified to be a chief. And according to our research, has not followed the Illinois requirements to take classes, which means that he is further disqualified to be a police chief. We're still investigating that now as we speak. But if he didn't take classes and he's not taking the appropriate classes to be a police chief, that's why he doesn't know how to be a half decent Lord leader for the Dalton Police Department. That's why he continues to do unlawful things 
so blatantly and so so in such disregard because he is dumb ignorant but he is also a clear liar he literally could have just as a matter of fact it is a felony to fall a to file a fake police report. Okay. I got to do some research because it's a felony to file a false police report. I got to ask a question because he said, as quoted, the mayor had an order of protection against me. He blatantly lied. We know that it is on dash camera. I'm going to get that dash camera. I'm foyering that dash camera and I'm going to play that dash camera. But if this man a lie, if he was coming to be a savior, but y'all, you all recognize something else again. I told you all this. We already knew this based on our own research and investigation. She did not call the police. If she felt that she was being harassed or in danger, May Hinyar would have called 911. But in fact, she called Key Price. She called late Lewis Lacey. And she called a few other people. <laughs> They acknowledge I didn't know she was in a car because I didn't. I didn't talk to her. I didn't look for her. I didn't say nothing. I saw some hands in there. I just thought that that wasn't one of Kamal's other bitches. Couldn't have been the mayor. She always got a detail. She always riding in the truck. And I figured, hey, if he were one of his other bitches, that ain't my business because I've already got enough of them. And so she called Lewis Lacey. And then this clown calls the police to say, I'm stalking and harassing her, which is also another blatant lie. Kamal says that I was fidgety. Hell, I you know what? He ain't lying. Because while he was talking to me, I kept looking around because I'm going to watch my surroundings. And I kept trying to leave. And he kept talking. I said, all right, well, you go ahead and have a nice day. I just wanted to talk to you as a man, man to man. Would you go ahead and enjoy your day? No, I really want to talk to you, brother. And I just want to encourage you. And you got something. You could be a multimillionaire. Don't let people mislead you. I love you. Like all that bullshit. Only to turn around and try to set me up with that punk ass police chief. Who gone, who was a huge liability. He is a liability. I want to also make you all aware of something at court. And I know this for a fact because I got a very keen sense of discernment. I can look in the eyes of half of those cops and tell they didn't even want to be in their courthouse. And when I looked at them, most of them put their head down. You could tell because again, remember what he said? It's like children. They like kids. Grown motherfuckers, they got an oath and a, they got the option of lethal fucking force. Sitting there like little bitty fucking adolescent babies that don't want to get in trouble by their daddy. They didn't even want to be in that courthouse. And I could see it on most of their face. And shocked the fuck out of me when the watch commander came and at least had enough strength and gall in herself to speak. She said, how you doing? I'm looking like, huh? I could talk to whoever I want to talk to. I'm a child of God. How you doing? I'm good, but I don't think we should talk. She walked off. Uh, commander Inez shocked the fuck out of me. But even she looked up like, yeah, I know the chief don't want me to talk to you, but I'm saying, how you doing? I'm a child of God. Okay. They said she don't like white people. She okay with niggas. So she just, I guess she'll speak to me. <laughs> but 
But this man blatantly lied. And ain't no way he could say that he thought or assumed. He lied. She has a restraining order against Jedediah. They've had prior incidents. The only time I've seen Mayor Hinyard in my presence in person was when I was at Thornton Township meeting. And I only interacted with her during public comment. He lied blatantly. Why? And when I was in that meeting for the rest of the time, I focused on everybody around her, not even her. At the meeting, I didn't interact with her. I, I went in, but my conscience wouldn't let me sit in that warm chair while people were sitting outside in the rain. So I went right back outside, didn't even sign in the damn thing. I didn't interact with her at the board meeting. He lied. If you haven't seen the video or the images, here it goes. I was trying to figure out was Kamal a decent man? What did he mean until I saw these? Number one, was he on a security detail coming that many minutes late? No. Was he in his uniform? No. Was he in his jurisdiction? No. But I thought that this picture was interesting because you can look at that Sambo as nigga boss, I got you. But what really, really, really stuck out to me was the boss. And do you all know that I didn't even have a clue that she was even in the damn car? And when I thought about it in hindsight, there was a hand in the car when he went back to the car. That woman was in that car that whole time. I guess. But this is the thing. This is not the face of a woman who deserves any public sympathy or any mercy. Because I know for a fact that she called this, that even with the FBI, they believe that they are untouchable. And this man who know our conversation, if he was a real man, wouldn't be a part of that. He deserves no public sympathy or consideration. And since my mama shouldn't have been mentioned, and you threaten my mother, I want you to know you've been heard. This man is filing a report. At the very least, he's retaliating because I filed one against him. At no point do you think that, and now on that, because I don't think that I don't think that this is a game. So at no point should anybody be thinking that this is a game. This is real life. This ain't the internet. This ain't entertainment. And so with that being said, I want y'all to know that I'm safe. And residents of Dalton and police from different agencies made sure that I was able to get to safety and comfort so I can continue this fight. And for now, that's all I want to talk about concerning that. <laughs>
I don't know. What was I swear? I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.